Katie Brooks, the solar panels on the roof of her Fremantle apartment building represent big savings on her power bill. I budget every single dollar that I have. I know exactly where all my money goes and being able to track my power bills, know how much they are and put money aside also means I can then save for my future goals. The 35-year-old maths teacher spends just $50 a month on her power bill, but she also makes money because residents here can sell surplus energy to their neighbours in the same building. We probably make $5 to $10 a month. Quite a few of our residents are semi-retired or retired, so if they're doing their washing, you know, running their dishwasher, running their air conditioning, if it's a hot day and I'm at work and I'm not using any of my energy, then they can purchase my allocation before we buy from the grid, um, so I get a little bit of money back. The building uses technology created by an Australian startup called Powerledger. The online software allows residents to trade solar energy in real time. The technology will be rolled out across another 10 developments in Perth over the next three years. The challenges are already starting to emerge. At least 28,000 home energy storage systems are predicted to be installed across the nation this year. In Western Australia alone, it's estimated more than 45% of all households will have rooftop solar by 2025. We're transitioning from dumb to smart. <laughs> what we want to do is be able to control them in a very precise way so that they can provide the ability to balance supply and demand in real time. Battery storage is a crucial piece of the puzzle. If you've got a large fleet of dumb solar on roofs, um, when a cloud hits, the whole grid gets impacted by that one big cloud. If, if you've got battery and solar coupled, then it doesn't impact on the grid in the same way. Bob Hunter's house in Swanbourne has been fitted out with solar panels and, crucially, a battery. Through the app, I can see what kilowatts are being generated through solar, but also, importantly, what we're using. His house could eventually join up with other houses that have similar systems installed to form what's called a virtual power plant. The battery obviously just adds a bit of capacity where it takes in the extra that we've generated, so we're not always going to the grid if and when there's no solar. Earlier this year, the West Australian Government released a five-year plan that includes trialling a virtual power plant in the suburbs of Perth before Christmas. We're moving quickly to implement microgrids where they're needed and virtual power plants are just another example of the technology that uh, we're utilising to bring down uh, the, uh, the future cost of the grid. But some in the sector say virtual power plants won't suit everyone. A recent trial of the technology on 30 houses on Tasmania's Bruni Island revealed mixed results. And they're kind of overly optimistic about um, the predictability of people's behaviour in the energy context. Some didn't like the installation process, others didn't like the technology and disconnected from the virtual power plant after the trial. It's a question of supply and demand and there'll be many householders that uh, choose not to have a battery but the real uh, benefit is to make sure that uh, all the resources are visible to the network and able to be used for the benefit of the system. School teacher Katie is happy to test out new technologies. She says while selling excess energy to her neighbours is a good thing, there are limitations she'd like to see ironed out in the future. At the moment, we don't have the mechanism to trade power between the different strata companies, so I guess in the future it'd be really cool if we had excess power, we could sell it to the neighbours down the road rather than just the neighbours in the complex. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.